Hello guys, how's it going? Good to, good to see you here. We'll be getting started here in about five minutes or so. Um, <clears throat> I actually decided to do this live stream uh, after uh, Gaijin TV there, that's Manic, uh, asked for some advice on OBS. I, I've, I've helped a few friends with it, and so I decided that uh, it would be easier to show you guys how to do some of this stuff uh, in person. I'm not certain how well this will work as in a live stream format for a couple of reasons but uh we'll we'll see how it works and uh we'll go from there so i'm excited uh thanks for thanks for coming in if uh you have any specific questions uh let me know at uh the end um well actually just just that just throw out the question i'll be i'll be looking at the chat off and on but uh because of the way i have to have this set up with my dual monitor set up uh, it may be a little more difficult for me to see exactly what you're uh, what you're saying, and until uh, I get a chance to look at the look at the chat. Which, so I am gonna pull it up on my phone as well, uh, the chat, so that I can see uh, the questions more easily. Uh, since I only have the two monitors, and I really need basically I need a third one. A third monitor would be super helpful. So. Okay, I'm cranking up the music just a little bit, uh, so we're going to see what that sounds like. Yeah, that was from, uh, I pulled it up on my phone so that I could, could uh, adjust levels. And so you're hearing, hearing from, coming from my phone for a second there. Uh, but I've got got my phone muted now, so we're, we're good to go. Uh, Tori Brown says, yay, a stream I won't have to leave for work in the middle of or be stuck for work. All right. Hi, Tori. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, I, we don't, I, don't, I don't see you on, on just a ton of streams, so it's, it's cool, cool to see you here. I, I do see you occasionally. No worries. I, I, know, I know you come to them. I know you, you support the channel, so I, re I really appreciate that. Um, so we'll be getting started here in just a minute. I... Uh, and then I'll just kind of give an overview after we after we really get in into it. So again, I'm hoping that uh, I can I can juggle my two screens or rather my three screens pretty well. Ah, welcome to the stream, Silverlands. Happy Wednesday to you as well. Uh, hoping I can juggle my three screens <laughs> uh, decently well, but, but we'll we'll see. So um, let's see. Pull that up there. Okay, should be good. And we have a full 30 minutes of this beautiful music, so I am very excited. This is this is one of the best songs from uh, Baku no uh, Baku no Hero Academia, which is uh, My Hero Academia. It's a fantastic anime if you haven't seen it yet. So. Just so you know. Tori says, uh, normally I have to wait until late at night and watch them later, but such is adulting. Oh, for sure. Silverland says you're using OBS dark mode. Yeah, I, I use it in the dark mode, and uh, I'll get into that as well here in a minute. Um, so... All right, so we have about one minute left, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop the overlay, and so we'll be in here, okay? Hi, everybody, welcome to the stream. Um, I'm gonna tip that down just a hair, so that, there we go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lean back a little bit. This is a comfortable live stream, you know? We're just, we're just here in the morning, everything, so so we're good to go. Um, so if you, if you see me glancing down and to the left, that's me checking the chat. Uh, if you see me looking up, uh, that's because my secondary monitor is up there, and that's where I'm keeping. Uh, one, one, sorry, uh, that's where I'm keeping the OBS that we're filming because I can't use 
my OBS that I'm using to stream this while using OBS. Uh, so I have two opened, which I had to go through a complicated thing that I don't remember how to do in order to make it where I could have two at once. You'll, you might have to look that up for yourself if you're interested in using uh, two OBSs at the same time. Uh, that does use a lot more processing power though, so it's, it's not really a, something that I would suggest necessarily. But Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get into it. Uh, Manic uh, in the chat, uh, he's, he's Gaijin TV, uh, asked me uh, for some advice on using... Uh, OBS and so I decided that I would uh, make a video for it and then I decided that that was too much work because I'm a lazy son of a poop and so I thought oh I'll just live stream it and we'll get some people in here and uh, anyone who's interested in looking at OBS or listening to some awesome music or just hearing me ramble for a while mm, listen to that sorry um are just <laughs> interested in listening to me ramble for a little while uh, they can. So, um, so I'm gonna go over a couple of things here, and I may get off into just some regular production stuff as well, not just fully OBS. But uh, I, I just wanted to, to bring it up. Okay. So, first things first. Uh, if you're gonna do OBS and you don't have it, you can find it here at the uh, OBSproject.com. Uh, OBS stands for Open Broadcaster Software, and you can download it here based on your on your system. Very, very simple, easy to do, uh, and you know they have some information here on their website. So uh, if you're if you're not seeing what <clears throat> what you're looking for in this tutorial, then you can uh, find it. That may be able to find it there, or you will be able to maybe find it uh, on a on a another YouTube tutorial. YouTube tutorials are where it's at, guys. Uh, everything that I have learned to do for my entire channel has been YouTube tutorials, and I'm not even joking. Every bit of editing that I do, every bit of of work that I do with uh, with Photoshop for my thumbnails and every bit that I do with OBS and streaming, I learned every single bit of it from tutorial videos online, which is one of the reasons I'm making this is because that's where I got all my information, so I want to share some of that with you. So uh, real quick, we'll pull up uh, OBS again. So assuming you have it downloaded, this is more or less what it'll look like. Uh, there is a setting in here for uh, the dark theme, which is what I have it set on. Uh, they, they have different themes. I use uh, dark theme because A, I just think it looks cooler, and B, it's, it's a little easier on the eyes. And if you're editing late at night, it's way nicer to have that. So uh, here you have just uh, all of your general things. So uh, so you, if you want to go to your settings, you can come up here and hit file settings, or you can uh, hit it down here as well. Um, so this is going to be your language and things like that. Um, one of the good things is, is there's a lot of information here. It can look really daunting, but luckily, welcome to the stream, Genetics. Uh, one of the nice things is that you can get by without uh, having to mess with a lot of these these controls. So uh, it, it really, really is pretty easy. And I left pretty much everything here on the general page standard, except for changing the theme to dark, which was a personal preference. Um, here in the stream, uh, you're going to see uh, this is your information on actually streaming. Uh, so here you can uh, switch this to whatever uh, system you're using, whatever service you're using, Twitch, Mixer, YouTube, you know, whatever it is that you're doing. Um, that's where you do that. And then uh, you're going to pick your server here, which, which is really easy for YouTube because obviously there's only the one. And then this here is your stream key. And uh, the stream key is something, it's, it's, it's personal to your stream, so you don't let anyone else see it. Uh, and I'm trying to remember uh, if I have, uh, I can show you where to find that stream key uh, without actually showing you my stream key. Uh, so we're going to run over to that really, really quickly. And I'm going to go into live streaming. Um, Okay, so whenever you're live streaming, it's gonna be live streamception for a minute here. Um, you're gonna find your key, uh, oh, right here. So this is where your your uh, stream key is right here on YouTube. And on Twitch, it's gonna be somewhere else, obviously. I'm not 100% not sure where you find it, but that's, that's where you find it there. 
So just so that you know know that, I'll pull that off there in case there's any uh, sensitive information there that, that I don't realize I'm showing everyone. <laughs> I, th I don't think that I'm showing you anything that I don't want nobody to see, but I could be. I think the streamception just continues on. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm just going to keep going. Uh, great. Oh, that's delightful. It's going to keep getting smaller and smaller. Ah, oh, yes, this is awesome. Uh, let's see. Uh, Raytheon Hudson says, Hi, Nathan Cakes. I couldn't resist. I just woke up and thought of your Doki Doki LP and saw you were live. I'll watch the rest later. Drop a like. You know, I'm happy you're sharing your skills. Oh, thank you, sir. I appreciate you you, you stopping in. That's, that's a very, very kind of you. Yeah, I, uh, so anyway, I'm going to get off of this particular screen so that we'll, we'll stop the inception, even though it's very enjoyable. <laughs> so this is where you're going to put that, that key. Um, so that's that's like the basis of your streaming. That that ties this streaming button over here to your stream. Now the the dangerous thing about that, the thing you have to remember is that that means that that button will make you start streaming on that site immediately when you press that button, with with no warning, with nothing else happening. Now I believe there is a setting here in general to show confirmation dialog when starting streams and to and when stopping streams, and you might want that. Uh, just in case you, you're afraid of that happening. I did have, uh, it was before my very first charity live stream. Um, and if you look at my live stream playlist on my channel, you'll find it. It's called Nathan Blake's Accidental Live Stream. And I was practicing with the other three or four people who were going, going to be uh, on the live stream with me. We were making sure that we were able to uh, communicate well, that, that you know, we had all the textures and stuff like that. Gary's Mod can be really, we were, we were doing prop hunt. Gary's mod can be really, really problematic. So we were, we were basically doing a dry run the day before, and I went over to record it because I thought, oh, I'll grab some highlights from this maybe, and you know, you never know. And I actually bumped the streaming button. I didn't even have YouTube open, but we started streaming in that moment. And so we played for 45 minutes before somebody else in the stream realized that we were streaming, and I like shut it down. And, and, you know, thanked everybody just like it was a normal live stream. I was like, ah, oh, thanks for being here for this uh, impromptu accidental live stream, guys. I, I don't know. Uh, sorry about that. So, anyway, that's just a small warning. If you press the streaming button and your stream key is in here for, for your site, whether it's Twitch or YouTube, whatever, it will start streaming immediately even if you don't have a web browser open, which, which may seem intuitive to you and may seem completely normal. To me, like, like I didn't make that connection right away that like it would start streaming even if I didn't even have a browser or a, uh, or a, a stream set up. Um, <clears throat> so just know that. Uh, next, we're going to go into uh, output. Uh, this, by default, is on simple, uh, which is going to look like this. But uh, that's that's not uh, very helpful for you <laughs> right off the bat. So uh, go ahead and click that and go to advanced, and it's going to pull you into this this screen here where you're going to have uh, specific settings for each each thing. Um, so uh, focusing on streaming, <coughs> uh, you want your encoder to be set. Uh, I, I keep it set to the X264. Uh, uh, and that's the encoder, if I understand correctly, is, is what compresses and decompresses the file. So, so that's going to affect how nice your, your, your stream looks. Uh, Tori Brown says, the accidental live stream is hilarious. 12 out of 10 recommend watching it if you haven't already. <laughs> um, <clears throat> here you have the, uh, the ability to rescale the output. So even if you are filming at like 1080... Uh, you can you can force that down to rescale into a 720 stream, uh, which I know at least up until recently Twitch didn't allow anything larger than 720. So so that's a helpful thing for that. Uh, the rate control I always put at CBR. Um, uh, yeah, and I can't remember entirely what the reason for that was. There there are going to be some things here where I'm just going to tell you this is what I do, and I can't remember why. <laughs> um, and <clears throat> you know, maybe you can find a better way of doing it, and so I totally encourage you to do some research on any individual thing that you don't know why you're doing it, and then you can let us know down in the comments or whatever why it should work a different way. So the bit rate here uh, is is very important. The bit rate is how much information you're telling OBS to send. Um, so really, really quickly, I'm gonna grab onto the OBS that we're actually using to, to stream so I can show you this. 
um, and you're going to get some of that inception for a little while, and that's probably going to be terrible on, on the bit rate. But here in the bottom right corner, you can see how many uh, KBs per second we're getting, 3,200. Um, so basically, uh, and that green box there means that we have good stream health so that it's, it's, not, it's not too much for our system. So basically, the long and the short is, is, is uh, you're going to have that uh, right here in this bottom right corner, like you just saw on my, on my real stream. And this number here represents the target that your computer is shooting for of sending information. Um, so you don't want to bottleneck it because uh, you know if you set that at 2,000, then it's going to get you're going to get lower quality stream. Um, but you don't want to overshoot either because your your computer is going to try as hard as it can to hit that target, and if it's incapable of hitting the target, then it'll slow everything down. So you have to find that Goldilocks area in the middle for your computer and your internet connection. Um, if I remember correctly. YouTube suggests at least 2,500 for the bit rate. So I shoot for 3,000 um, because my internet connection can handle it um, and because my computer can handle it when running at this ultra fast rate. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, so that's how you end up getting uh, the higher quality uh, streams running at, uh, at our 1080p at 60 frames per second is based on how much uh, bit rate you have, how much information you're sending. So just jump back over here. So just so you can see that. Okay. So the next thing on our list to talk about is is the keyframe intervals. I leave that at, at two. Um, and I believe that has to do with with uh, ah I can't I, I had it at the tip of my tongue what that one had to do with, but two is a good setting on that one. And again, you know, some of my things are going to be, this is just what it's set to, and I can't remember entirely why, but it works. So um, if you copy the settings, you're likely to get a decent decent stream out of it. Uh, right here is the CPU usage preset. <coughs> Higher equals less CPU. Uh, so what that is is um, how much uh, CPU you're allowing your computer to use to send that information. Um, most computers you're gonna want it on ultra fast or maybe super fast because uh, most computers, unless you've got like a super powerful gaming rig, you don't have the CPU to to run, like like render the, the video and send it and also be using like a lot of C CPU power there. And if you have a decent graphics card, it's gonna be using that anyway and so you shouldn't need very much of it. Um, I keep it on ultra fast. Uh, just because I was having issues on, on other, uh, other stream amounts, uh, other CPU usage, usage presets, and it works perfectly fine for me, and I'm perfectly happy with my results. So there's that. If you want to uh, talk a little bit about recording real quick instead of streaming, in case you're, you're more of a uh, Let's Player instead of a streamer, which I am, um, <clears throat> we can come over here to recording. Um, Right here in the recording path is where you can set where your videos go whenever you save them. So that's that's very helpful. Uh, so you can you can make a custom file somewhere and tell it to save your videos there. Otherwise, it'll go straight into the normal videos uh, file for your PC. Um, I always record my videos in uh, MP4 because it's it's one of the more versatile types of files that allow that allows you to be able to use uh, in in pretty much any type of file format. Um, now this does give you a warning that, that they're unrecoverable, the file cannot be finalized, blah, 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 but I've never never even been able to, like if, if, if my computer shuts down halfway through recording, I don't think it really matters if it's an MP4 or not. It, I pretty much lose it, so it doesn't really matter. Um, <clears throat> so then uh, here the encoder on this one, uh, I go ahead and use the NVENC H. Uh, 264 because H264 is uh, one of the best files to use for uh, videos uploaded to YouTube. So uh, whenever you know you want you want to think about using uh, H264 whenever you uh, actually encode your video, uh, whenever you export it as well. Um, whatever exporting software you use, I use Adobe. Um, because the H264 is like the standard that YouTube uses. So I may have a, I may have an Adobe tutorial on on good uh, exporting uh, 
practices later. Um, we'll get, get to that at a, at a later date. Here you can rescale the output for your recorded videos the same way you could with a stream. So if you wanted it to export in into 1920 by 1080, even though it was a smaller video, you could force it to scale up to that. Uh, it'll look terrible, but it'll feel it'll fill the same space for you there. Uh, we use CBR for the rate control again. Um, here the bit rate can be much higher uh, as long as you have a, a decent computer because uh, it's not about sending that information somewhere else. So it's not bottlenecked by your internet connection or your or as much by your computer speed. So therefore you can go much higher and get much higher quality out of it. Uh, so if you shoot for a high target, you're not going to necessarily get worse video out of it even if your computer can't quite hit that target. So I shoot it at 40,000 uh, because my computer is pretty powerful, it's reasonable. Um, you may have to play with that number a little bit when you're recording, uh, just because otherwise you may have some issues uh, with the speed that your video goes. Because again, if you slow your computer down by having it shoot for too high of a mark, then you will get laggy videos anyway. Um, pretty much all of these things, if I remember correctly, are, I left pretty standard aside from that. Okay, so moving on, uh, here you can actually record audio from in different into different tracks, um, and I, I haven't played with that any yet. Uh, it seems like a really cool idea, but I already uh, I'll talk about it a little bit more in a little bit. But I already record my audio separately from everything anyway, so it doesn't really matter as much for me. Um, so here's here's your main uh, audio settings here. Um, one of the things you want to make sure is that your sample rate is set specifically to what your microphone does. So as you can see here, I have the mic and auxiliary audio device set to my Yeti stereo microphone. And uh, I'll just pull that up for you in my recording devices so that you can see that. Um, let's see, I'll just pull that up there. Okay, so there's my, my Yeti there. And uh, when you go to properties uh, in here and go to advanced, uh, you want to set to whatever the highest quality is, which we want it set to that, so. Broke it. Okay, there we go, it fixed itself. <laughs> I think it fixed itself. You guys tell me if you lost my audio. But you want this set to the highest uh, hertz you can have it. So uh, most are gonna hit at 4800 hertz. That's very common. Um, so you set that to 4800 hertz and that just uh, is the amount of information in your audio stream, therefore how, how high quality it is. So you want this number here set to the same. So we just set that to 48,000 uh, 48, hertz. So we're setting this one to 48 hertz as well. Um, leave to stereo. Your desktop audio device is what device your sound is being sent to that you're able to hear it from. Uh, so I have my headphones plugged in, which are separate from like a normal audio jack or even the normal like audio uh, port on my, on my desktop. So I have to actually set it to listen to the headphones right here uh, and use that same sound so that I know I'm getting the same sound on my recordings or my streams that my headphones are getting. Um, there's a lot of different things you can do with that. That means that you can you could set it up if you wanted to to uh, only hear part of your your music or hear your music and not something else or or something like that by setting your de your default or your desktop audio device to a different audio device than what you're using to listen to. Uh, which could be helpful, for instance, if uh, if your voice, for instance, is going to be coming through on a different channel. Uh, it can be really, really distracting to hear your own voice in your head. So if you can switch that to something that has all the sound but your voice, however you want to do that, then that can be very helpful, which I've done in the past. Um, all of these other things, uh, these are just uh, for individual devices and stuff, being able to... Uh, set hotkeys for push to mute and stuff like that and push to talk so I don't use any of those I don't use any hotkeys because uh, in my experience the hotkeys have caused more issues than solved um, Dnetics there in the chat or earthly gaming you'll see him uh, he actually just had a problem where he couldn't figure out why his videos were only recording for a few minutes sometimes and then stopping and I couldn't help him with that issue. I never had that problem. I was like, are you sure that you're, you're, you have enough space in your hard drive? Like, what, what's going on? And, and I couldn't help him with it. And then he discovered he had hotkeyed uh, one of the, the start recording button 
to something that he was using in game. So, so let's just say, for instance, this isn't necessarily what happened to him. Um, but if if he had hotkeyed start recording to R because that you know this record, so that that makes sense. But then you use R in game. Then when you bump R in game, you're going to have a problem. And sometimes you know you you could do a combination like Control R or Alt R or something like that. But but there's always that chance you're going to accidentally bump that and you're going to ruin a recording. So the way I do it is a little different. Again, I'll get into exactly how I record my videos here in just, just a minute. So uh, coming back here to, to video, uh, we want the uh, downscale filter to be at the, the highest uh, samples that we can. Um, what that does is, is that's based on, that's how much information is going into the picture so that when it stretches, like let's say someone's watching on TV or a very large computer monitor, you still, get uh, a more high quality picture because when you stretch that out obviously you lose quality so the the higher that is the higher quality is when it gets scaled um, and TVs don't really have very good scaling capabilities they use they use very low quality scalers so that's why you get such terrible uh, uh, such a terrible look out of um, for instance, uh, if you plugged an NES, like on an old school NES into a newer TV, you're gonna, it's going to look terrible because it doesn't scale well. So you want that to look as good as it can because actually a good percentage of people nowadays watch YouTube on their televisions. Um, obviously the, the screen resolution here is, is pretty uh, self-explanatory um, and you just want that at, at you know, whatever your, A, your computer is capable of running and B, uh, whatever, whatever you want, want it to be at and then you can force it, you can scale it to a different resolution, so um, if you want to do that there. Um, then this is the FPS, this is, this is how many frames per second you're getting. Uh, most cameras film at 30 frames per second. Uh, a lot of games nowadays are at 60 frames per second, and uh, movies and things like that are usually framed, uh, shot between 30 and 24 frames per second, so that's how you get that cinematog cinematic look. Um, I run mine at 60 frames per second just because whenever I'm running a recorded video, I use my, uh, my DSLR. And my DSLR is a, uh, a 4K camera, so if I run it at 1080, but at 1920 by 1080, it gets 60 frames per second. So that's why I have such a smooth look on, on my camera. The, the webcam that you're viewing through currently only gets 30 frames per second, so this being set at 60 is not actually giving us any any added benefits and our music just shut off so we're gonna gonna go ahead and go back and make sure that we start that one back up again because man I love that song I love this music it's good background music too because it's just or orchestral uh okay so that's about all there is here uh, there are uh, some advanced settings here um, and most of those uh, I have left completely default, um, so there, there's not really a need to uh, change all those, but uh, there are definitely ways here uh, for this stream delay, that might be an important thing for you. Um, if you are having trouble with your stream being the right, uh, like your video matching up use the stream delay in order to affect that so you can delay one uh, your, your video so that it matches up with your reactions to it on the stream but if you have a uh, something like an Elgato uh, HD 60 it should uh, do the delay for you and you shouldn't have to worry about it, it should be automatic but that's where you find that setting um, since I do ev almost everything on PC and the little bit of game console gaming I do I do with my Elgato I've never used the stream delay function so I'm not a master of it so uh, if you need more information on that I suggest looking up a tutorial uh, on, a, on some of these uh, on YouTube um, so then we would hit a, apply I don't remember if I really changed anything for reels or not but I don't have a reason to believe that I should change anything that I did so we're just gonna hit cancel but you want to hit apply because obviously you don't get your settings otherwise okay so now that we have finally got settings out of the way and those settings are paramount they're very key to you getting a good experience uh, we're gonna talk about two more things that are going to be uh, important to to your OBS experience 
The first one is you're going to want to make a, uh, let me see. I need to, I need to minimize that. That's what I need to do. Okay, you're going to want to make a, uh, OBS shortcut. Let's see if I'm actually getting, getting that, yeah. You wanna make an OBS shortcut on your desktop, okay? And then you're gonna wanna right click on your OBS shortcut and you want to go to properties. Um, and now that you're in properties, you're gonna to go to compatibility and you are going to uh, click right here and click, check this box that says run this program as administrator. Click that and then hit apply. So you want that clicked and then you apply it Okay, so now every time you double click on an OBS, it runs as administrator. And welcome to the stream, Zombie Hunter. We are we are uh, learning a little bit about OBS. I'm help, helping helping some friends out. Figure I'd just go ahead and make it into a full stream so that so that anybody who wanted to know about OBS could learn a little bit. Um, so you're gonna do that because OBS has a few issues that oftentimes are resolved by running as administrator. So your other option would be right click and click run as administrator every single time, but sometimes you forget to do that and that same issue you were having before pops up and you're like, what? Oh, I didn't run as administrator. So if you do that way, uh, if, you, if you right click, do properties, go to compatibility and click this checkbox and apply that, then you won't have any problems uh, with, with those bugs at least, the, the few bugs that do arise from that. So uh, that, that's fairly important to the OBS system. So uh, that solved at least three or four of the issues that I had when I first started using OBS, where uh, the system just wasn't working. It was having huge problems. I couldn't figure out what I was doing wrong and then discovered that, that that's what it was. So, all right. So now that we've finally gotten past like just setting up OBS, but, and I know that it's a lot of information and it, it seems like it's overly complicated, uh, but it's, it's super important to, to get those basics down of setting it up because the, the better you have it set up, the, the more, uh, the, the, the better each video is going to be. So that's your foundation and you're gonna build everything else you do off of that foundation. And now you know where all those functions are. So if you're having a problem, you might be able to find the solution in those settings. For instance, the bit rate on our video uh, recordings uh, here in uh, output and recording this bit right here this bit right here could be affecting the quality of your video so if your video uh, is moving too slow you can reduce that number and that m it might make your videos less laggy so consider that um, now that's only if your video is laggy specifically because it recorded laggy not because it's lagging in Adobe or something like that. If it's lagging in Adobe, but the regular video, whenever you replay it, it looks good, then that's not gonna affect that. But, uh, so you, you wanna, again, you wanna kinda find your Goldilocks area in there. Find what your computer can do easily so that it can still run the game and the processes at the same time. So, uh, moving on from that, now we're gonna talk about scenes and sources. Um, so I've made a new scene here, scene three. Um, I have all of these other scenes that have all this other information in there, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna go through a couple of things really quick, and then uh, we shouldn't have to. I just I just panicked for a second because I looked up at my other OBS and it says that I'm not streaming, and I was like, have I been talking to a camera for no reason for 30 minutes now? <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so um, now we're gonna talk about scenes. So creating a scene is easy, you just click here and you create a scene. A scene is just a different set of sources. So this one is kind of more or less the, the set of sources that I use for recording videos, and this one is more or less the ones that I use for streaming. Um, and then this is a new one that I've created specifically for the purposes of this. So um, we're gonna talk about a couple of these. Uh, we don't have to talk about all of them. A lot of them are pretty self-explanatory, pretty easy to deal with. Um, so I'm pretty sure that you, you guys can figure it out. I'm not, not worried about that. Um, so starting with, with the more important ones, the display capture here, uh, if you click that one, it'll ask you what you want to name it. We're going to, we're going to create a new, just new capture and we'll just name it display capture three. That's how you get this. That's how you get this effect. So that's what I'm using right now, uh, in OBS is, is that because we want to use, uh, the, I want you to be able to see everything that I do. Now, you're gonna notice down here in the bottom right corner, 
that uh, sometimes my, my kilobytes go down quite a bit, especially if there's a lot of motion on the screen. Um, and that's because it's having to compress a lot more information and send it through because I'm moving so much, and so it's gonna look bad. Um, so, so doing things like what I'm doing right now is a terrible idea. <laughs> so, uh, oh, whoops, 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 whoops. Looking at the wrong one. Okay, there we go. It's a terrible idea to do on your stream. It's gonna suck up a bunch of your, your bit rate and cause problems, so I'm getting very, my brain's getting a little confused about which which OBS I'm supposed to be clicking on right now. So no worries, I'm I'm, getting, <laughs> I'm, I'm adjusting. So uh, that one's display capture. Uh, so we're just gonna rename this one just 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 to help us uh, remember what it it is. And we're just gonna name it Inception. I, I think I spelled Inception right. Um, just because that's the video within a video. Um, this little icon here is the lock icon. So if you click that, then it won't let you move that around. Uh, it will stay exactly where it is, so I can't I can't adjust that any. Uh, if I unclick it, I can do all kinds of movement with it. Um, so uh, that's very helpful if you keep accidentally moving things around on your screen. Um, so now we're going to get in here and we're going to go to Game Capture. Game Capture is one of the, the things that you're going to be using the most, uh, recording videos or streaming uh, a specific thing. So today I use uh, window or display capture because I'm switching apps constantly and you're seeing that motion, you're seeing me switch things, you're seeing me jump between things. And you can do that technically while using window or, or, or game capture or window capture, but it's a lot more work and you have to be way more professional about it and I'm not professional. <laughs> I'm garbage at this, guys. Um, so just so you know that. Now the game capture, uh, Oh, game, that name's already in use. Uh, so we're just gonna put some numbers there. Just so, okay, so here's Game Capture. And uh, it will uh, capture any full screen application that you're using, which doesn't work quite as well. A specific win window or capture the foreground window with hotkey. So what I do is capture a specific window. And then you're gonna pick what window you wanna catch, capture specifically here, and it will look at all of your open programs that you currently have and allow you to pick one of those. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and click GIMP here, uh, and we're gonna hit OK. And then a lot of times that image won't show up until you actually reveal it on your computer uh, and pull it up. Um, so uh, sometimes you just won't see it, or if it's a certain type of program it won't pull up very well um, for a, as a for instance so you can see more or less what we're doing what do we got going on here? game capture oh whoops uh, looks a little bit like the game capture exists but it's only up in the tiny corner so if you've got an issue where, where you can't figure out where your, your game capture is or whatever and you accidentally pulled the 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 file away uh, you can right click on it and you can go to transform and you can click to uh, fit to screen and it'll open it up the way it's supposed to be it'll fill all the corners with it now if you do that and the the uh, the, in, the picture's a little smaller it's a different resolution it might stretch it and skew it uh, but I'm pretty sure on just fit it'll just, it'll just pull it out until part of it at least is touching the edge if you do the actual stretch to fit one, then that will change the resolution. It'll actually like the stretch to screen. That'll actually cause cause like stretching, make things look stumpy or thin, um, based on what you're doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and find a program that we are gonna look at uh, so that you can see uh, me clicking on or, or pulling up a game or something. Um, I really want to make sure that there's no music coming from I'm, I'm pulling up Cuphead and I, I really want to avoid uh, we're gonna reduce our desktop audio for a second because there's nothing I hate more than more than one song playing at once so you're gonna you're gonna lose uh, the sound on the music here for a second but but believe me it's worth it here for a second so let me just skip through here go to options audio and just turn the master volume in game down so we don't have to worry about that okay so that should be good all right so um you can even see down there that i have the cuphead icon pulled up 
Um, let's see. Epically Sam says, can you stream to Facebook and YouTube at one time using OBS? I don't know that you can for sure, unfortunately. Uh, I There might be a way. Uh, I'm not aware of it offhand. So I would actually... Uh, refer to to uh someone else who's a little more knowledgeable about streaming to multiple sources at once i've never streamed to more than one source at once so um okay so now that we've got this game capture and we got cuphead pulled up what you're gonna see here is uh we're gonna go ahead and go to properties on that and change the window to cuphead cuphead.exe and then we want to match the title otherwise find window of same executable is what we want that setting on so that'll find whatever is the closest thing to Cuphead that's pulled up on your computer. You can already see here that Cuphead is clearly pulled up, uh, that it's responding to, to our controller prompts, uh, and that's, that's just right in there. Uh, sometimes, as I was mentioning before, uh, that image will not pull up immediately. And if that happens, uh, just go ahead and, and uh, click on whatever game it is that you're looking at. Uh, and a lot of times that will pull up the image for you. So, Heavily Sam says, I use Elgato, that's why. Uh, oh, the Elgato uh, software? Yeah, the Elgato software can do a couple things that OBS can't, but OBS can do so many more things than than the Elgato game capture software that, that uh, it is just kind of the go-to. Uh, in general, um, it allows you to do so many more things. For instance, if you had more than one Elgato hooked up, you would be able to run both of them on the same OBS. So if you wanted an, uh, an Elgato hooked up for your gaming and an Elgato hooked up to like run a DSLR, you'd be able to put that up there. There's not a good way to do that with the Elgato game capture software that I've discovered. Um, so that's a, that's a major issue there. Um, so yeah. All right. So uh, this is. Uh, when you can uh, start messing with your layering here. Um, basically, let's say you want to overlay a webcam on to your video the way you're seeing right now on my channel. Um, if you want to see that, then you're going to come down here the same way to uh, this, and you're going to come to video capture device. Video capture device is going to be any device that sends video to your system on your computer. Um, so, uh, let's see. Uh, I think that's an actual issue with my camera that I'm having, not, let's see, let's add, I think normally if I can't get it to work that way, then I do add existing and just use the Logitech that I'm already using and that usually has, has solved most of the issue. But for some reason, it's still not, and I'm not 100% sure why. It might be that it's uh, fit to screen, maybe? Hmm. Oh, I know what it is. It's because I'm already using my webcam. Um, so the thing to do now is for me to go ahead and pull my other one up so that you can see what it looks like. Uh, even though it's it's a little confusing and it's going to be a little bit more drugsy whenever you get that whole Inception look. But... Uh, we're just going to go ahead and show you this way. Okay, so as you can see here, I have my webcam pulled up right here and my display capture too right here. Um, and if you click on your webcam, that's how you get it to highlight it and you can move it around. Uh, so then you can stick it in the corner. You may need to uh, crop the size of your webcam so that it fits in there properly. And to do that, you're going to right click on it and you're going to go to filters because cropping is a filter for some reason. And then you'll add a new filter here and you'll click crop. And that's, that's how you do that. That's also where you can go do color key for, for your green screen, uh, scaling or aspect ratio, things like that. So uh, just just know that's that's where you find most of those things, and that's where you get the crop. And if you want to crop it, you can do that here and adjust it uh, one point at a time, basically. So there's that. Um, when putting in your webcam, uh, be sure that it is above your your thing because something that I haven't really explained yet is that this here is actually a list of layers so from top to bottom front to back and if that doesn't make sense what I mean is is if my Logitech is behind this 
it disappears because this layer is in front of it, you see. But as long as it's above it on the list, it will it will remain in there. Now, uh, anything above it will also go in. So, for instance, I can click that and pull in my image that I have. And I'll talk a little bit about images in a second. But a lot of times I put my image at the very top so that I can turn that on and off whenever I need to and have that uh, set up that way. So that uh, if, if you're familiar with my streams at all, a lot of times... I will pull up a, uh, whenever you come into my stream, uh, about I usually start about 10 minutes before the actual stream, I go ahead and hit stream, and I have a picture like this or something set up, and then I have music playing, and that way you can, uh, you can be in the stream, you can chat with me, and you can listen to music, and I can even talk to you through the microphone, but, but you're not going to see anything that's going on behind the scenes. Um, so I, I put that image there for that reason. A lot of times I also put on there, you know, streams starting at 10, 10 a.m. MST so that, so that you have an idea for what's going on right now. And that's also a visual cue for the archive later on so that if someone comes and watches the, the live stream after the fact that they can uh, just skip forward to the point where that picture is gone and they know this is when the stream actually starts. So um, there we go. So... I just realized that I was like motioning to the camera and I still had that up there. So that was, <laughs> that was kind of funny. <laughs> um, so uh, that being said, we're going to talk about a couple other little things really quick. Um, let's see. Actually, if I go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and shut this one down now. And we're going to go ahead and use the main one uh, as our... So you're going to see me looking up, kind of leaning back and looking up, um, and that's because I'm looking at my secondary monitor because that's where everything is right now because I was having trouble getting my computer to capture the bottom monitor, and that's a, a video driver issue, not a not a, not a OBS issue. Um, so uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. What do we need to do now? Ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh, but then that that there's that problem. Yeah, I gotta gotta leave the display capture on, or you won't be able to see it. Okay, you won't be able to see my my mouse otherwise. Uh, so yeah, let me go ahead and okay, I'll open my other OBS up again. Fine, launch anyway. Okay, this is my other OBS. Let me put it there. Okay, uh, and then we're going to go ahead and come back to scene three and shut off the display capture. Okay, so now we're going to get in the nitty-gritty of a couple of finer details about this, but I'm going to try to try to be uh, clear and concise and quick about it because I don't want to stream for forever. You know, I want to take up more, than, more time than I need to of your life. Really, I meant for this to be about 30 minutes long, but anyway, at any rate... Uh, what you can do is, uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and explain just one or two more quick things to you. Like I said, video capture device is going to be anything that is sending video in your PC. So that's going to be a camera. That's going to be your Elgato. So if, if you're capturing from your Elgato, which I have an Elgato, uh, if you're capturing from your Elgato, you're going to come here and you're going to click on your Elgato Game HD, or there might be another one up there sometimes when your Elgato is activated, which will say 01 on it, and you're going to pick whichever one actually pulls the image up. But anyway, so, so you, you would have that there, and you can name that your Elgato so you don't forget what it is. Um, I'm bad about not naming things because I just kind of remember what, what I'm working with, so it's, it's not, not going to bother me. Um, so let's fit that to the screen. Okay. So if I had my Elgato hooked up, you would be seeing the image right here, right now. Um, and then uh, we would be able to put our, our webcam up here in the top right corner, similar to what you see there in the stream. Um, so that's that. Now, what you can do here, like I was saying before, is you can click image right here and click uh, create a new image. And then you can browse any image on your computer here. Uh, and you can put that in as as an image on your thing. So if you have something specific that you want to be always remaining in the corner or something of your video, uh, you can put that there. Um, if you're wanting it to be like a, a cover, like I do, you can you can stretch it out and and pull it across the entire screen. And again, because it because it is above the Elgato, it will cover the Elgato. 
so you can you can turn that on and off in order to to uh, cover it let's see uh earth gaming says since the p24 i camera has a usb plug it and would I be able to use that as a camera for the OBS? I believe so, yes. Um, assuming that, that the it is actually designed to send the video signal through that USB, it should. Um, but if it's just for charging, then probably not. But you can you can totally plug it in and see if it registers in OBS. Um, so, all right. So that's how you can create an image for to put in front of here. Uh, you can throw that into your, your MS Paint or your GIMP or your, your Photoshop or even, even into uh, MS Word or whatever and put some text on there and put, you know, SpongeBob stream starting in, you know, at 10 a.m. or whatever so that you can use that to kind of cover up your stream. And it allows you to, oh, the PS4 camera. Oh, the PS4 camera. It might. It might. I don't know. I don't know how it plays with Microsoft computers, but you could give it a shot. I don't know why it wouldn't, but it, it probably could. You might have to find some drivers online and download them if it doesn't do it automatically. But it might. The PS4 camera might do it. Um, so uh, the last couple things we're going to go ahead and talk about uh, are the uh, – or really the last thing we're going to talk about for today uh, is, is the browser here. Um, and what that is, is uh, if you want to see, I'll go ahead and pull my other one up here because it's already got one on there. Um, you see this here is my, my Tiltify overlay. And what that is, is that's, that's from our charity live stream there. Um, and what that is, is that goes to a, directly to a website. So if you had something specific from a website that you wanted to be showing on your screen, then you could do it that way. Um, so a lot of the, the overlays that you see on Twitch or things like that come from that. So you'll, you'll find those things by coming in here and going to browser and then hitting OK. And then it's going to ask you where you want to get your picture from your browser. And you're going to put the website name in here. Um, and then you're going to adjust the size here for, uh, you know, set this to uh, 1920 by 1080 is likely what you're you're running in and that's going to stretch it out put it put it on at the size it runs on default as uh the uh by default it runs the obs website um but that's just so that you know that, that it's there so this is a uh this is a this isn't me using a screen capture or anything. This is the actual website as it is at this moment. So if you go uh, and get a, uh, a header for one of your uh, streams, like, like one of these overlays, um, then it'll give you a website specifically for your overlay. And that website for your overlay uh, will be, you'll copy that and you'll paste it into... Um, that that browser name right here. So they the Tiltify website gave me the overlay website, which you go to the website and it's just the overlay. It's synced with the charity and how much money we've made and all that information. And so it it updates that consistently live. And but that's the only thing that's on the website. And so you grab that URL and you po you plug it into into this. And that does it. And so you're going to be able to find overlays all over the place, all over the internet. You can find overlays different places. Uh, I haven't done a whole lot of overlay research. I'm probably going to start using more over, excuse me, more overlay soon. But uh, yeah, so there's that. There's that information. Uh, we're going to go ahead and shut that off and turn off that overlay. Um, so the last thing that I'm going to touch on is audio and recording for audio. Um, when you're live streaming, you have to use, obviously, these settings right here because this is running your, your desktop audio through here. Um, just remember that we, we didn't have our music playing. We didn't have our jams. I'm sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and so uh, you, you've got your jams running, and you're going to want to keep an eye on where it's, where it's hitting on this sound meter. Um, so you know, one of the the volumes that you want music to be at when you talk over it a lot is you want it to hit around the the uh, 40 to 30 mark. Now up here in this top right corner here you see uh, 
where the limiter is. So this will not allow the music to go louder than negative 24 decibels. And I want it to be hitting somewhere around 35 decibels anyway. So uh, we've got it right there so that it hits there. For my voice, you want to you wanna turn up the volume that your microphone is receiving uh, on your actual recording device thing uh, that I was showing you earlier where we changed the hertz on our microphone, you know. You want to turn that up to a decent level, around 75%, and then limit it. Make sure that it limits around eight to six, negative eight to six decibels, because uh, negative six decibels is right where the red is. Um, and you, you know, even though that may be a little loud, that's not going to hurt anybody's ears. That's not going to cause any real problems. And that's where you cut off distortion too. You're going to get less distortion. For those of you that don't know what distortion is, it's whenever your your sound is too high. And your microphone can't catch all of that sound. And so it has to catch parts of the sound. And when it only gets parts of the sound, it causes distortion. It makes it sound messed up. Um, and so you want to keep your microphone from peaking because that's whenever you lose sound quality. So you need to figure out where you personally need to be on your microphone level. When I'm recording, my microphone's only at about 59%. Because I usually talk pretty loudly, and I yell a lot, and so uh, I can fix that. I can make myself louder in post. I can't make myself quieter in post if I spike. If you spike, if you hit that red line, your audio is messed up. There's nothing you can do to fix it. So you want to you wanna err on the side of caution and be a little quieter and then raise back up. And that's one of the last things that we're going to talk about here on the stream is when streaming, you have to do it this way, more or less. Um, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to uh, actually record a little test video of your music playing and of your, your microphone running so that before you start so you can hear that the sound levels are good, that it's mixed well, and you want to yell or something a little bit so you know that you're not losing any of that sound quality at the upper end. That being said, when recording audio, when actually recording a Let's Play or something, I vehemently suggest that you use a separate program for your microphone audio. Get yourself Audacity. Audacity is right here. Uh, you can go online and just search for Audacity. It's a free program, and it is uh, a program that allows you to uh, record audio. It's very, very simple, easy to understand. Uh, so I would get, get Audacity. And then what you're going to do is, is you're going to, at the beginning of a video when you're recording, you're going to hit recording. You're going to start your recording or your video. And then you're going to turn your microphone on OBS all the way up, all the way up. And then you're going to go to your Audacity, and you're going to hit uh, record on it as well. Uh, this up here just so you can see what it looks like ah whoops that's not what i wanted ah. there we go you're going to hit a record on your audacity as well and then um what you're going to do is with the sound all the way up on your on your obs and the sound recording on your audacity with OBS in recording because you obviously want to be recording your video, right? Because you don't want to you want to accidentally play an entire game without actually recording. So you're recording here. Your microphone volume's all the way up. Audacity's opened and it's recording. Um, and then what you're gonna do? I'll go ahead and pull them both up at the same time so you can get a feel for this. We'll just go ahead and simulate this. Let's pretend that we've got a game recording here. We're gonna turn this all the way up, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna clap really loud really loud clap and then we're going to turn the, the volume back down on obs all the way to zero so now this spike i'll go ahead and stop those recordings now this spike here uh, you're going to be able to see that like night and day on audacity um and you're going to be able to see that spike on your microphone audio for obs is going to be one of the only loud points in the entire video. So those are two two moments that you can match up perfectly. And then you know for certain that your audio from your voice and the audio from your game are perfectly aligned, and then you edit from there.
Um, what that allows you to do is use Audacity uh, to uh, do things like reduce background noise. Uh, you're going to be able to compress your sound files so that everything sounds consistent in the same volume. It's going to allow you to uh, record at a quieter volume and then raise that volume later on because recording quiet and then amplifying it gives you better quality than recording loud. Um, because if, if, you, if you spike, like I was saying, if you spike while you're recording audio, you've ruined the audio and there's no way you can fix it. If you're too quiet while recording the audio, you can raise that volume up. And then there's also uh, just, just one little quick bit of information, uh, these effects here in Audacity. Uh, the, the best thing you can do for a video to make it have high quality audio is record your voice separately and then come in here into effects and you click noise reduction um, after, after clicking on the track that you want. We're gonna highlight this area here, we're gonna hit, hit effects and we're gonna do noise reduction. And now uh, I keep this set to about 10 decibels, 6.5 sensitivity, and four frequency smoothing bands. You highlight just the part where it's quiet, where there's dead sound, and you hit get noise profile. And so what that's done is, is it's listened to this little one second long clip of sound. And, uh, oh, Warn, Warn the World says thanks for this video. No problem, yeah. You're going to highlight this area, this one second area, and hit get sound profile. And what that has done is it has listened to that one second, and it said everything that's in this one second period of time, I want to reduce things that sound like this. So you want it to be whenever you're not talking. You want it to be whenever it's dead silent. And then you can click your whole thing by double-clicking, and you can go to effects again and click noise reduction. And now you're going to hit OK here. And what that has done is, is it has gone through your entire sound recording your entire audio recording and looked for anything that sounded like your dead silent times and reduced the sound on all of those frequencies so what that has done is it has figured out what your room sounds like when you're not talking so any of the the faint gentle <laughs> blows on your microphone you know from your air conditioner or from the fan blowing in the room or the hum of your your lights or whatever it's going to pick up those frequencies and then look for those through the entire audio file and reduce those frequencies. So you're not going to have as much room sound. Uh, so that is, let's see. So that is what you're looking to do is make your sa your video sound as crisp as possible by doing that. Um, if you if you use these settings too aggressively in the noise reduction or your room sounds are too loud, and so you have to run this more than once. So if you turn these way up, you're going to get a weird modulation sound on your videos. It's going to sound kind of robotic and stuff. So you, you still have to be sparing with that. And you can't have like a jackhammer running next to your house and then expect this to reduce it and get rid of it. But it will give you crisper audio. Um, the last two tips about using Audacity that I will give you uh, is uh, whenever, you're, whenever you're using this, um, obviously we want our our claps here to be around because we need those. Uh, so you can double click on the whole thing like this and that highlights the whole thing. And then if you come over here to the beginning, you get this little finger. And if you click there, you can drag that and you can, you can highlight different areas. So that's really good for if you have a 30 minute video and you wanna highlight everything but the first two seconds, then obviously that's really helpful. We're gonna pull this just to the other side of our clap because we want our clap to be in there, we want our clap to be loud, and we want it to be noticeable. So we're just highlighting this area after the clap, because that's our video. And we're going to click Effects, and then we're going to do Compressor. Now, I have my settings on my compressor really, really aggressive, um, and there's probably better ways to do it. But if you have it set up more or less like this, um, with the threshold very low and the noise floor very high and the ratio extremely high, like maxed out the attack time and the release time pretty low, then what's going to happen is it's going to raise all of the audio for what you've grabbed to a similar level. See, it's, it's kind of leveled those out. And then you can hit effects again, and you can click normalize. And then you remember we talked about negative 6 decibels being as loud as you want anything to be so it doesn't spike. You want to set normalize maximum amplitude to negative 6 decibels, and you click OK. And now you see that. You can see how all of that audio is a pretty similar level. If we go back, that's what it used to look like. See how this one's way bigger and these ones are really tiny? Um, well, if you...
well, yeah. So if you use compress and then uh, normalize like that, then you're going to end up with consistent audio throughout the video. After you've compressed, after you've normalized the audio, then come into these little dead zones. Now, you, you aren't going to noise reduce before and after. I was just showing you how to noise reduce before. But whenever you do that compression, sometimes that'll make the noise room louder too. So you want to start with the compression, then normalize, and then grab in one of these one second areas of silence and do your noise reduction, get profile, then click your whole area again, and just drag over it, noise reduction, have your settings set here for something pretty moderate, because if you go too, too strong, you're gonna get weird modulation sounds, you click that. All right, what we have here is one set of audio that has a consistent uh, volume within a three decibel range that should have very little noise in the ro uh, room noise and you can independently raise and lower the volume of this from your game audio so that you know that your game audio will always sound good comparatively to your voice. So you don't have to worry about, oh no, is my game audio too loud? Because you can always reduce your game audio or raise your voice audio, and vice versa. So those are my big tips those are the big things that i had to talk about today so i know i went for a little over an hour i apologize for the length of this uh, i know that uh i know that you know you're not necessarily overly interested in every single bit of this but hopefully that's given you some information some tools that you can use in your own streams in your own recordings and things like that i cannot stress the importance of using audio separate from your uh, separate from your game audio enough. Recording your audio separately is just super important to getting crisp, good, great sounding audio. So I always suggest that. Um, and then even if you decide to start using like a higher dollar camera and you're gonna have to have that as a separate video and edit that in post, you still use the exact same format. Now you're gonna be syncing your audio from your your voice, audio from your game, and the audio from your camera all at the same time. And you do it the same way by filming with your camera, turning the audio on, the, the microphone audio on on your uh, OBS here, starting your recording on, on your Audacity, clapping really loud so you get that huge spike. Make sure you then turn down the audio on your OBS because you're gonna have trouble with audio otherwise because you're gonna have an echo and there are ways to work around that, but I'm not gonna talk about that today because I've already been going for too long. So that's that's one of the number one things is make sure you hit record, make sure you have the audio on for the clap on your OBS and then turn it back down so that you have that single point to match up with your spike over here and the spike on your camera if you're using a, a higher dollar camera instead of a webcam. So that's all I've got to say, uh, let's see. Oh, okay, let's see. We got we had a we had a specific question. Uh, Guy Gen TV says, "Just quick, can you crop your cam and add borders?" You can. Okay, so uh, for cropping your camera, uh, you're going to come. Let's go ahead and maximize that. For cropping your camera, actually, you know what? We're gonna pull up my other one up here so you can see. We're gonna double click on our Logitech. Oh, sorry, not double click. We're gonna right click on your Logitech and do filters. And the filter here is uh, the, the, the crop, you're gonna click plus, you can click crop pad, and that's gonna put one on there, which obviously we already have one, and you click on that, and now we can we can crop our image as much as we want. See, I'm, I'm uncropping right now. We're reducing that number, and our video is actually growing, because um, my webcam's a pretty wide angle. So, see, if I leave it that way, now we've got this huge area over here on both sides of me. Um, so obviously there's that. Now, as far as borders, you can find borders if you already have a border made up that you like. All you have to do for that is the same thing that we did with, with this SpongeBob picture or, or, with, or with this picture here. Um, we're going to really, really quickly, because I already have GIMP opened up, so it's not going to be a problem for me to do this. I'll just show you what we can do 
uh, in a, a really, really quick way. We're gonna right click here, we're gonna do layers, transparency. Uh, okay, uh, add ch alpha channel is already on there. Um, so this is this is obviously not gonna be a, a perfect uh, way of doing this because we're just doing it really, really quickly to show you and this is obviously not an OBS or a, a GIMP tutorial. But just so you know, you're gonna make your image that you want to use as your as your frame, and now I'm gonna do uh, export as, and we're gonna export it as a, a PNG, PNG, uh, a dot PNG, sorry, and hit export, and then it's gonna ask you uh, how you want to save it. You want to use uncheck the save background color export. Okay, so now we've got that. Uh, I think it saved that to documents. I'm always really bad about not looking to where I actually sent my images. Yeah, documents. Um, so we're going to close that, discard the changes. Okay, now we can come here, we can go to images, browse, and then we can go to our uh, documents, and then we get the OBS tutorial PNG file. And it. Uh, I want to make sure that it fits the screen uh, first so that it, it's smaller. Okay, what you can't tell right now is that this area in the middle is blank. Uh, so uh, whatever's behind that, uh, we'll pull up another image so that you can see. Whatever's behind that you're going to be able to see through because we saved it as a PNG file. Um, it doesn't matter what I use. Or just curse the thumbnail will be fine. Okay. See that? Uh, image 2. There we go. See, that's a frame now. Uh, Dnetic says, Hey, thanks for the stream, but I have to go. See you later. Yeah, have a good one. So, see, that's a frame now. Uh, I know it's a little confusing because I made it a frame and made it look like what we're already looking at. But uh, you should see it on my screen because I've got a third one. But anyway, you can make whatever image you want as long as you cut an image out of it and save it as a PNG and make sure that it, it, it has transparency, then you're going to be able to use whatever you want as a frame. I could, I could take a picture of myself and cut my face out of it and make that transparent and stick it over me and so only my face moves and my body just sits there frozen if I wanted to. So, um, There are other places you can find overlays for your camera online uh, download those and use them those already be PNGs uh, and so they'll, they'll work just fine or they you might find that they are the browser overlays like like the one like the tiltify overlay that we were, we were looking at like uh, like this one here if they're a browser overlay then you're gonna use that that same browser system that we talked about earlier and put the website in there uh, if it's a live overlay it's a live overlay instead of just a static image that you just want to stick around your picture to frame it. Uh, if it's a live overlay like like this one, like like our Tiltify one here that showed how much share money we raised during our charity live stream, then uh, you're going to put it in a browser uh, overlay, not in a image. But for now, uh, if you're if you're just wanting to put a blue border around your, your thing or whatever, that's how you do it. You just create the image make it transparent where you want it to be transparent create image load the image in wherever you've saved it click OK and now it's here and you can put it put it wherever you need it make it look good make it look real good and now you, you just framed it everybody's happy looks like you're recording Courage the Cowards or the Dog so any other specific questions about something specific? Because uh, otherwise, I guess we're we're pretty much uh, finished up for the day. Because I, I don't think I have anything else really specific that we needed to talk about. I'm gonna go ahead and reset my camera here to be a little bit more the right size. <laughs> so. All right, so if uh, there's no other questions, then uh, I guess we're all finished for now. I want to thank you all so much for coming by, for watching, for being patient, sitting through such a long stream that uh, really was just a bunch of information. But uh, I really think we uh, 
touched on almost everything that, that you, you need. Um, so uh, hopefully that's enough information for you, for you guys in TV and for, for Dinetics and for anybody else uh, who watches this video. Um, I want to thank you all so much for being here, going on this uh, fun tutorial adventure with me. Uh, it's just, it was actually quite a bit of fun. I might do more tutorial videos, talk about a little bit more of my stuff later on as well. But uh, for now, thank you, and uh, as always, we'll see you in the next one. And for now, this is Nathan Blake signing off for Nathan Blake Games Tutorials. Sayonara! It's a perfect place in the song to stop. I'm just going to jam out for a second. <laughs>